The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. There was an Avrech that he was asked on behalf of his kolel to go and uh, collect money. He had absolutely no clue to collect money. He never did it before, but they practically begged him. They told him the Rosh Kalel cannot do it anymore. He's literally at wit's end. He's been going to this place and that place. They need some fresh blood. They need someone else to do it. So he said, okay, fine, I'll do it. If no one else will do it, fine. So the story goes is that he, he, went, he went to a certain city. And when he went to this city, they told him that... Uh, he, in order for him to, to really hit people up, he's got to go to a certain time, he's got to go to a certain place, and whatever, fine. Anyways, he goes to a certain time, certain place, he collects dismal, really, really bad. He gets a few dollars here and there, but nothing. So anyways, he turns to somebody there, he says, listen, this is my first time collecting, I've never done this before, what do I do? Guy tells him, no, nah, let, me, let me take, he says, what are you collecting for? He tells him, well, you're collecting for that? Organization. I know that organization personally. I'm going to take you to a guy, I'm telling you, he's one of my best friends, Come with me. And with that, he grabs the, the Avrech and they go into the office. Nice office. They come, they sit down, and the person explains. He's very, you know, between multi, explains what it's all about. He says, okay. He writes out a check, $180. So the friend who took him there is like, uh, he's like, what are you doing? He's like, I gave him $180. He's like, no, no, we want substantially more. He's like, that's all I can give you right now. And then they start to walk out. So the Avrech is like, okay, $180. It's $180 more than I had before. You know, he's happy. And the other person, the friend, he's so mevoyash, you know, he took his friend and said, this guy's going to help you out, who knows, $180? And he turns to his, the Avrech turns to his friend and goes, what, what's wrong? What's wrong? I'm embarrassed. I told you that. I take this person and $180, that's embarrassing. This guy could give much more. He had a few more zeros that won't even hurt him. He says, no, 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 you don't understand. I did my hishtadlut. If HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants me to get money, I'll get money. He's like, oh, yeah, 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 you rookie, you think that because uh, you did your... No, nah, it doesn't work that way. <sighs> ah, come on. Anyways, they went to pray Mincha. After he prayed Mincha, he got a tap on his shoulder from a random person. Person says to him, hey, you seem to be not from out of town. What, what are you doing here? He says, well, I'm Avrech, Kolel, I'm Kati, I'm He says, you know, I really like you. That Shmon Esther you did, it reminded me of like when I was a Yeshiva Bachor, when I was Avrech Kolel. You look like the real deal. And he sat down and wrote him out a check, $18,000 on the spot. And the friend saw that, his jaw dropped. He's like, what in the world? He says, I told you, you have to do your ishtadlut. HaKadosh Baruch does the rest. We did our ishtadlut. I went, I asked somebody, he gave me 180. If I'm supposed to get 80,000, I'll get 80,000. But I have to do ishtadlut. Such tmimut. And, but it's so true. People, they say, oh, I did this business deal, that business deal. Yeah, and what? People... They do all these different things and saying da 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 and nothing comes from it. They get dragged down, dragged down, dragged down, dragged down, and then nothing. And in the middle of nowhere, someone happened to mention a thing and the person clicked and said something, da 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 boom, and they go, what, what just happened? I have no idea. Borei Alam decided you got it. Boom, that's the same thing also over here. And I'd like to conclude with one story. Another collecting story. This is a very profound. Ramai Lech Biderman said this story. It says, Ramosha Aaron Stern, Zatal, the Mashkiach of Kamenetz. He was actually in Denver, Colorado when I was a kid. He was supposed to speak at my bar mitzvah, but whatever, it didn't work out. There was a <laughs> scheduling issue. Somebody was supposed to pick him up and it didn't, whatever. But he was, he was in, we were in Denver at the same time. And so I've always felt like a strong kinship towards him. A tremendous Tamil Chacham, Yorei Shemayim. And the story goes there. Ramosha Aaron Stern was always makbid to t- pray Tfilah B'Tzibor his entire life. He would literally spend extra thousands of dollars in order to have a layover in a different country so he could pray with a minyan and they get on the next flight. Do you understand that? In other words, most people would just like, they get on a, okay, non-stop flight and then just yalla, go. go. He'd say, you know, if I'm going to miss Tfilah B'Tzibor, I'm not doing that. He would stop off in, let's say, in different places in Europe, pray and then get on a flight and then from there and then catch another minyan at other places. He never missed Tfilah B'Tzibor. Okay. Anyways, the story goes that he was in Switzerland one time, and he came there, he was praying with a minyan, and somebody told me, you know, by the way, at the 9.30 minyan, there is a very wealthy individual, everyone goes to him, they get at least 100 francs. It's a pretty significant amount of money. Every person who comes to him gets 100 francs. Okay? But you have to come to the minyan. What do you mean you have to come to the minyan? Rabbi Shah Answer says. He says, yeah, no, he has to see that you're praying in the minyan. If you're just coming around going, tzaka, 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 right? He's not going to give to you because he gets annoyed by that. You have to be part of his minyan. He's 930 minyan. Rabbi Shah Answer goes, wait one second. But that's against 
the Magen Avram, the Magen Avram uh, Shita of Shema is a little earlier. He says, I don't want it. It's a Chilul Hashem. I'm not going to pray there. He says, no, it's just say, put on your Tfilin before, say Kriyat Shema, and then come to the later Minyan. You know, you could dance, dance at both Chatanad, at, at both weddings. You know, why not do that? Not Chilul Hashem, I'm not doing it. Rabbi Stern, listen, this is a hundred, the hundred francs. Your Yeshiva, common you need, it needs it. You can't deny them for that because you have Hakpata. What, is it, what does your Frumkite have to do with the Yeshiva? You have to think of Yeshiva. He says, I have to do my Ishtad Lut. I'm not giving up on my Yerat Shemaim. I'm sorry. He says, I'll ask him, and if he gives me, he gives me. If he doesn't give me, he doesn't give me. Okay, fine. So the person realizes that Rabbi Sharon Stern is not changing his mind. Okay. After the 9.30 minyan was over, around like 10.15, 10.30, Rabbi Sharon Stern walks in, without his talit and tefillin, walks in to come and speak with the person. And his friend, who's from Switzerland, is walking with him. He's like, there's no way Rabbi Stern's getting a dime. He knows the rules. The rules are, you don't pray with his minyan, you're not getting anything. He doesn't, he's not going to give you anything. The Meshach and Sarum walks in, he looks up, this person is somewhere in his talit tefillin, looks up, he goes, yes. He goes, my name is Meshach and Stern, I'm here on behalf of Yeshivat Kamenitz. He says, you know, you look like a tremendous Talmud Chacham. Hold on one second. He reaches in his pocket, gives him a hundred franc. Now, the friend from Switzerland is like, whoa, never saw that before. Suddenly, he grabs the Meshach and Stern and goes, you know what, come to think of it, you deserve a lot more than that. And he stu- ticks in his other pocket, he gives him another hundred, and another hundred, another hundred, another hundred, another... And Rabbi Meshach Anser is just standing there like this, like as if that's totally normal. The person from Switzerland, his jaw is getting progressively lower and lower and lower with each hundred franc that keeps being given. After 1,400 francs were given, he says, I don't have any more Kvodah ben Mechila, I'm really sorry, I wish I could give you more. Thank you so much for coming. You've really uplifted my day to see someone with a tzura of a tamil chacham. I appreciate that you can. So Rabbi Sharon walks out with this person and he just goes, I don't know what just happened. How in the world did that just happen? He says, you made a mistake. You think that it's your hishtad. It has nothing to... You have to know, Borei Olam does result. Hayom la'asotam umachar mekabas charam. You have to do what you can, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu will do the results. You have to do your minimal, and you have to know, it's nothing to do with me. All I did was, I walked in, I stuck out my hand, I said, I'm collecting, can you please help me? That's it. Zehu. And Borei Olam did the rest. And a person has to know that the more you say, see that, the more it's easy. Life is so much easier. I one time saw a t-shirt that said, life's not complicated, human beings make it so. It's so true. Borei Olam made a beautiful, beautiful life. We make it so complicated, complicated, convoluted, that, 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 we're thinking all these, that, that, that. Borei Olam is like, oh, okay, all right, we're going to have, uh, you know, uh, you know, this, uh, this, like, uh, this, you know, this whole mousetrap, and who knows what, bah, 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 bah. this whole, this whole inverted thing, like, okay, you want to play that game, we'll do that game. So, you know, a Ruben Goldberg thing, you know, like, a, a whole thing, da, 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 and I, what are you doing? Borei Olam is going to work with that. But if you work with Tmimut, Borei Alam goes with you to Tmimut. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.